All right, let's make, let's make this. Olivia, where's Olivia? Olivia normally sits right there. All right, gotta find Olivia. Come on, let's go. All right, so this is what we're gonna do. I'm gonna make this wallet out of this stuff over here, and I'm gonna explain everything I do as I go. The edge beveling, the bump jigs, the thread, I gotta figure out what color the client has requested, what needles I use, leather rougher, leather pliers, stitch and chisels. This is just a lighter, that's glue, that's the wallet. I'll get into that in a second. So let's get this thing started. Some coffee, you know how it goes. It. The f <laughs> all right so this is what we're gonna do today and I'm gonna show you all the easy steps and how to make this easy remember we're looking for easy and a little side note just so you know when you mess up and you think oh my gosh I shouldn't be messing up it's okay to mess up to the pocket upside down yeah i messed up but that's the only time i've ever done that one time so it's okay to mess up you learn it's a learning opportunity so when does the easy start right now right now i'm gonna show you just cereal boxes this is our pattern that's it if you didn't want to be tacky we could flip that over that's all there is to it one two three four five and back pocket Is that easy enough so far? I think it is. Hey. Hey. And this is Horween Dublin, five, six ounce English tan color. Glass Burnisher, Barry King. Now we just need to cut this sucker up, right? Put this back, et cetera, et cetera. This is, by the way, an NT cutter knife. Break off blades, disposable, inexpensive. Link is in the description. Let's cut off the first piece. Use a straight edge. We could use a clicker press, but not everyone's got a clicker press. Again, I'm gonna show you how to do it easy without this, quick. Okay, we got this straight edge cut, right? Easy, easy. Now, the trick is using the bump jigs. We don't need that clicker press. We're gonna do this quick and accurate, 100% accurate. Just bump everything up to that jig. Move that jig over here, because you know this is the right measurement, your pattern. So that's perfectly that way. You just gotta do the top and the bottom. And all you need again is the regular straight edge bump jig. By the way, links are in the description for the bump jigs and a square. Let's put a square on one end. We've already got three of our four sides. We'll use that bump jig again and get our fourth side. Piece of cake and 100% perfect. Now we just have these pieces left. 
something like that. And we could split this up a little bit and tackle these three here. Uh, hey, 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 sit. All right, so we know this is a straight edge here, right? Let us put one good corner. So we know that's our straight edge. We know this is pretty accurate. That's perfect. So mark that corner, because you know that's, that's a good one. Now we know these three pockets are the same height as the wallet. And we know this is our main body for the wallet. So let's just make these three pockets the same height as the wallet. Take your good corner right there. Bump jig, put that there. So now, those are the same heights. We just need to cut these three pockets out. Blade change. Three pockets, three quick cuts. Watch how quick this is. So I just cut these three pockets in about 45 seconds. I just put some curves on there, so hold on. These are our arc jigs, link in the description. Very, very helpful. So we wanna get this curve. I think it's this one, yeah, perfect. So just grab that out of there and then come over here. All right, we need that curve there. Take your bump jig and your pattern and grab a scrap of the same thickness. Take your arc jig of the appropriate size and there you go. Now you just cut around the arc. Huh? How easy. Bonus tip, you see how these have a natural flow and that won't? Just grab another arc jig Just like that. And you couldn't see anything. Hold on. We're going for that corner right there. See it? Now look how pretty that is. Much, much better. Nope. No Olivia. And through the magic of TV, I went ahead and got both of them done. Quick, 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 quick. If you're having fun, do whatever that says. Let's get this thing going. Next, we're gonna tackle these two right here. But first, see that? When that was wrong, that's what that meant. So now that's wrong. See, we're allowed to make mistakes. That's all wrong. That's wrong. It needs to be this way. First, we need this to be straight. This curve might look daunting, but it's not. Watch this, just put that up there in that corner jig, get a scratch all. Draw yourself a line and cut. Next up, this pocket it goes on that pocket, which is that pocket. That's already straight. So now you just roll. for our height. It's 
starting to come together. Let's tackle these two pieces. Barry King Edge Beveler. I get a lot of questions about my tattoos and their meaning and significance. The only one I'm gonna talk about today is this one. This is Rigby, my dog that passed away three years ago, right when I got Chloe. This is the paw print I got of him, of his paw, the day that he passed away. And the reason I'm mentioning that is because right there, by the end of this video, I might have one with Chloe paw print right there. We'll see. Okay, where were we? We were right here. We need to put this piece on this piece. Throw that to the bump jig and mark it. Then rough it up for glue. Don't forget, rough up that side too. Barge cement. What the f God bless. Amy wrote pliers. All right, we're getting there. Just need this stitch line here. So just get your dividers. We need some holes, stitch holes. This is the Mascot and ZV Anvil, link in the description. This thing weighs nine pounds, five ounces, but handy to yank around. Japanese cutting mat, Rocky Mountain leather. That was cut to fit the anvil. Malls, Berry King. That one is six pounds. That one, three pounds, 13 ounces. And that one, uh, about one pound, right at 16 ounces. Stitching chisels. My 15 teeth were made custom for me by Kevin Lee. Uh, these other ones you can get on Amazon. I'll put a link down in the description. And I usually use five millimeter spacing, but also four occasionally. just a deer bone as a bone folder. Upon further investigation, I saw this client was looking for Havana cigar. This is Ritz of Tiger Thread, one millimeter. Skizzers, Japanese scissors, Rocky Mountain leather. Needles. John James. I'm not gonna get into all the hand stitching in this video. I did a whole designated video on hand stitching with everything you need to know and close-ups and tips and tricks. And that video is on the channel. So go search that out if you wanna know everything and watch each step one by one. Now we just need to make that edge look pretty. Bevel, burnish, dye, sand, blah. Are we getting there or are we getting there? I think we're getting there. I went ahead 
it and beveled and burnished and dyed and did all that. Saved yourself 10, 15 minutes. All right, this client has requested a Horween stamp on this wallet. So I need to figure out where that's gonna go right quick. So that will be visible. So not much of the stamp will be seen, but that's okay. Maybe like that or like that. And hey, a bump jig. Use them every day. And we're getting there. This, the, what are you doing? Here's where we are. Like this. Let's glue this down first. All right, there is quite literally no reason whatsoever for me to show you gluing again on both pieces. If you want to watch it, go back or watch my other videos. Put glue on, let it dry, and then we'll put it together. To save you some time. Also remember, Tom Hanks said, there's no crying in baseball. Well, there's no crying in Leathercraft either. So I don't want to hear any crying about how come you didn't show me this and show me that. There's that pocket and there's that pocket, but you don't want the cards in this pocket to go all the way down to the stitching. You want these to sit up a little bit and these to come down a little bit so they're stacked like so. So got to put a card stop stitch right there. So that would be where the normal stitching is going to be on the outside. So we want a, another one about in the same spot. Since I can't seem to draw a straight line, I will just cheat. Boom. Six holes at six millimeters is perfectly fine. Just toss it in the middle somewhere. This will never be seen. And there we go. There's that hidden stitch. Everything's glued on except for this pocket. But we're going to put this pocket on correctly rather than upside down. we go like that. All right, there we go. See, that stitch is hidden behind that pocket, which is now done correctly. You can also notice that this wallet is bigger than the original. Again, always adjusting. This was way too tight, so I've made the pattern a little bigger. Let's put some corners on here. Arc punch. I'll put a link in the description. You can grab these off Amazon. Now let's mark it for stitching. Right, we're rolling, got the holes. Let's just bevel and do. Hey, Chloe. Have you seen Olivia?
stitched, now we can bevel. She's asking like real questions, you know what I mean? Like, Dad, how far is the sun from, you know what I mean? That's type of <laughs> shit. <laughs> Well, looky there, we did it. It's not too bad, and our pocket is right. 